Hello and welcome to today's I'm your host, Jim DiLorenzo, principal of Jim DiLorenzo Public Relations. You can find me online at jimdilorenzo.com. A reminder that I'm always available to answer your questions about public relations, how it works, what it is, how it can help you. Please feel free to email me at jim at jhdenterprises.com. Contact me through LinkedIn or on Twitter, where my handle is at jhd16. In my public relations career, I've had the good fortune to meet many interesting people, athletes, entrepreneurs, orders, coaches, authors, executives, editors, entertainers, and innovators. Sometimes they're all those things. My guest today is Barbara Freilinger, a professor of health and exercise science, as well as a network marketing professional. She is also a published author, international presenter, and an MLM six-figure earner. First met you, Barbara, on this set a few weeks back. Yes. And we, at that time, we were discussing CBD products mm -hmm. and how they are changing personal care. Fascinated by your career path, um, and we talked a little about this before, but uh, from being a student, student athlete, college professor, who today, what drove you to become an entrepreneur? Well, uh, my parents actually um, own a farm in South Jersey, so I grew up watching entrepreneurship, and it was never something that I envisioned for myself, actually, because it's a struggle when you're a small business owner. You never get to leave. Um, you are the system. You know, we didn't do vacations because everything was, you have to say, on the farm. Right. And um, so when I was going through school, I decided that I wanted to have a career that gave me a lot of freedom in my time, but I also felt like I really wanted to educate. So when I um, went into college, I originally thought I really love science because I had a really great science teacher in high school. And so I decided to major in biology and I thought, okay, biology education, maybe I'll go into teaching science after that. Sure. So once I got to my senior year, I realized I did not want to really teach at the primary or secondary levels. And I thought I'm not ready and I would like to do something different. I, I want to stay teaching, but I'm just not sure exactly what. So I decided to get a master's degree. I stayed at my um, alma mater, the College of New Jersey, and I stayed there and I went into the health sciences. I really enjoyed it. I loved the health sciences. And, um, and I thought, okay, because I got an assistantship where I was teaching at the college, and I thought, this is it. I really love teaching. I love teaching health. And my mentors at the time told me that in order to do that full-time at the college level, that I would get a P need to get a PhD. Sure. So I went to school, got the PhD, and was a professor of the health sciences for, well, it's been up to 15 years now. Okay. Yeah. So, and I got into what I'm doing now back in 2013. So, when you were a professor, uh, you were at a number of different schools. I think Trenton State or College of New Jersey. That's where, where I started. started. My, yes. And mm -hmm. then Seton Hall. At Seton Hall was where I finished with my PhD. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then were there other uh, college colleges that you worked with? Oh, I worked at uh, my first college. I worked full time was Keystone College in Pennsylvania, okay. and then I worked at Rowan University okay. uh, for a few years, and I also worked at Delaware State University. So I've done a lot of adjuncting to the community colleges yeah. all around. So I've I've done a lot, and I was up in Rhode Island uh, last year. Okay. <laughs> so I've seen a lot of different students, um, a lot of different strategies, teaching methodologies have been exposed to a, a really great diverse population. Yeah. yeah. That's a wonderful background too. Yes. And yes. College communities are so different than when I was working in a college community mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. 20, 30 years ago. But what happened in 2013 where you made this leap from college professor, mm -hmm. educator, mm -hmm. to um, was MLM the first step along the way, or did that you? was the first step? Yeah, yeah. it uh, actually I didn't even MLM know what it was. Multi-level multi marketing. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. I didn't even know what it was that I was getting into because I uh, have always been into health and fitness. Okay. So, and I've always done. Um, 
the online, the beach body programs. And I started following it. It all started because I wanted to get myself in the best shape I could possibly get into. So I started following a lot of fitness people on social media and my sponsor from Beachbody, I had been following her for a long time because she'd been in a lot of the fitness videos and I just felt very inspired by her. So we ended up talking on Instagram one day and she thought that I already was part of the company and that I was a coach. And I said, no, I'm not. And we had a conversation and I just was so, I was a little bit starstruck, I guess, okay. because I followed her for a long time and she wanted me to come on her team. And I thought, absolutely. So I didn't really even know the ins and outs of the business side of it. All I knew was that I had played team sports my whole life. I knew that I wanted to be a part of something. It was something that was bringing me joy outside of my job. And I didn't do it originally for monetary purposes. Right. But when I saw the potential, once I started doing it of how, you know, in the first couple of weeks I made $500, there was one week I made three, $300 in one week. And I thought that's my car payment. Right. And, um, and it was just because I was helping people online get healthy. And I was just talking to them about what I was doing and, you know, kind of just putting out my own health and fitness journey. So it was inspiring people. So I built this business then part time over the next, well, I was with them for four years total, but over the next two years, I was just doing it part time while I was working full time sure. um, teaching and it was great. And then I just, I had matched my income uh, in 2015. <laughs> I matched my income That's doing amazing. that part time. Yeah. So I just thought, wow, what happened? What, what's going to happen if I go and do this full time? Right. So that's what I did. I just decided to jump all in with my business and I did that full time for two years. Uh, got the itch to kind of go back into the classroom a little bit. So I, uh, I did teach and then I decided to, um, this opportunity with Viseo came along and I couldn't pass it up. So I wanted to work with my sponsor. Again, it's sort of any time in life, you have something that comes to you that you feel is going to be the next step to help you grow and move forward. Sure. And that's really what I love. I love constantly growing and evolving and pushing myself to higher limits. So when I saw this opportunity, I thought I'm going to go for this yeah. and see, cause it just felt like the natural, a next natural step. And has it been entrepreneurs and solo, solo entrepreneurs and business people, have their peaks and valleys. Yes. But <laughs> it, it seems like the early stages, the things were progressing quite nicely. Yes. yes. And has that continued to be the case for you, or have you found uh, challenges along the way that make you say, okay, I have to up my, up my game? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. It is not a, it is not a, just a um, smooth ride whatsoever. I, uh, yes, when I started with um, my first company, they were an established company and I kind of came in in year seven and that's at the tail end of the momentum okay. of the opportunity. I didn't know this until later on, but, um, you know, my business kind of leveled out right at that point where I decided to leave my job because I was thinking I would you know, yeah, catapult to the next level. So they made a couple changes company-wise in terms of the compensation and how they were uh, delivering product and that kind of thing. And that did affect the volume for a lot of the leaders. So a lot of leaders were leaving the company because of that. My particular issue was that I wanted to attract people who could who really wanted to do what I was doing, you know, build a business and duplicate and, and um, stay and have that vision and really see what this can do long term for your financial future. And I was not getting that retention. Okay. So it was a constant rebuild over and over and over again, which a lot of people do experience in MLM. And I couldn't figure out what I was doing that it, my business was just staying right here. So that's when I came across my sponsor now in Viseo, Rick Gutman, and I was watching him on social media and he was talking all about that and how, you know, in order to attract business-minded people into your organization, if you really want your business to work and you really want it to take off, you have to leave with financial education. And for me, 
I have a PhD. I've gone through schooling. I've, you know, like I said, my parents owned a business. I did not know a lot. They just don't teach financial education sure. <laughs> the sure. way that you have to learn it as an entrepreneur to really run a business. Yeah. So they just don't teach it. And so I have gotten to work with him one on one and also as part of our team. Um, for free, he brings us everything that he has learned in his 20 years of business, plus um, with real estate, network marketing, and he worked with Robert Kiyosaki, the author of the Rich Dad, Poor Dad series. He worked with him for five years, and he was mentored by him. Wow. So we get all of that education, that financial education, that mindset of the entrepreneur given to us for free with this organization that I'm in. And it's the only school in multi-level marketing right now that's out there. And our team has a 70 to 94% retention rate weekly that's because cool. of it. Now, when you say the retention rate, that's keeping people in your network, keeping people in mm -hmm. your program. Yes, and keeping people active on the products and they are engaging and duplicating. So, I bring two people into the business and then show them how to bring two people into the business. So now I've just duplicated my efforts six times. Okay. So if everybody works one hour, it's like I've worked six hours, right? The organization has worked six right. hours. So imagine, you know, Metcalf's law, say that duplicates and all of those people end up just bringing in one person per month. After nine months, you could have over 500 people in your organization. Right. Now think about if, all of them work an hour a day. But the problem is a lot of people don't get to the point where they stay in the business for nine months. I got you. That is, the that's retention. the key, the retention. Right. So that's why people keep building over and over in MLM. And normally the retention rate in the industry overall is two to 10%. But like I said, he's leading with this financial education in our school, and it's attracting a different kind of person who wants to build a business and wants to stay, and they understand that it takes time. Right. So that's what I needed. I did not want to keep rebuilding the same business again. Sure. It's tiring. <laughs> I'd like to continue with our discussion. We're going to take a quick commercial break, but we'll be right back after these messages with Dr. Barbara Fralinger. is for me and is so very important and we can't wait to have you as a guest Back to press conference on RVN TV I'm your host Jim Lorenzo and my guest today is Dr. Barbara Fralinger and we've been talking about her, her career path to being mm -hmm. an entrepreneur in the MLM space mm -hmm. and I think that's a natural progression is for me to ask about your current project. You're yeah. current working with a company called Viseo. Yes. You represent a company called Viseo. Can you tell me a little bit more about, you mentioned your, your, your mentor, the person mm -hmm. who brought you into this uh, program. Can you tell me more about what Viseo offers and what you're doing with Viseo? Well, Viseo is a nutraceuticals company, so we do supplementation and we currently have 10 different products, um, one of which is the CBD product um, that is all the rage right now. Right. <laughs> and we talked about it a couple weeks ago. So, um, but we have something for every category of wellness. So, and they're each in their own billion dollar category. So they don't cannibalize each other. And um, we just get to serve a lot more people. So that's the company. Um, and it is in its third year right now, which is very good because we're pre-momentum phase. Because if you're you are part of a network marketing company. You want to be in a legacy company, which means a company that will grow to be something that will be around for a while, but also can produce up to a billion in sales per year. Okay. You want to be in, in the starting stages of something like that. So, you know, and start building your team before it hits that momentum right. phase, right? So that's, that really appealed to me because I got in later in the other company and didn't really, 
realize the full benefits of that. Right. I didn't really catch that wave. So that was another thing that was very intriguing to me was what's going to happen if I do get into a company and I bring my work ethic and I bring, you know, all of this financial education to my network this time rather than leading with a product. Right. And I've attracted a totally different kind of person into my business this time. They're more business minded. Um, and it's just been phenomenal because my retention rate is good. Almost everybody that I have brought into the business is still currently active and they're working and they're learning and they're engaging in the business school because so many people come into this and they do not have the mentorship or the education to really understand what they're getting into. Hmm. They can't explain how the business works. Right. You have to be able to explain how it works. Um, I, and, I was relating to you my, an experience with somebody who's fairly well known in the, in the Philadelphia market and brought me in to, to discuss an opportunity and he presented it so poorly that it totally turned me off. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I kind of regret that now because I'm sure it probably worked out for him, but it wasn't right for me at that point. Right, right. And that has to be a, a, a continuing concern for people like you. Now, I've noticed since we met a couple of weeks ago, I've noticed you have a number of videos, you have a number of uh, opportunities to connect with you, to hear your story, to see, hear what your ideas and your thoughts through social media. Yes. You have a very active Facebook page, a very active Instagram page, mm -hmm. um, LinkedIn as well. Yes. And um, not so much on Twitter. We no. can talk about that at another time. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you have a lot of social media followers. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of a lot of content that you're putting on social media. Yes. Describe what you're doing, how you're doing it. Right. How has that shaped the growth of your business? Phenomenally, I, that is how you really grow a business is business is relationships. And when people feel that they can connect with you by you providing value in the content that you're putting out on social media, that's when you connect. And when that happens, I just really enjoy reaching out to people who have maybe been affected by a post that I made about something it could be anything in my day or it could be something to do with my life my career with financial education i try to bring everything that i'm learning to my audience right so that way it's it's free content and i'm not saying i'm an expert i'm just saying hey look this is what i've learned and usually i will have people who are intrigued by that and it starts a conversation and then I can ask them about them. Right. And that's really what this is. If you start to just go and talk about everything with you and what you're doing and you don't ask people about them and really listen to see if there's a way that you can help, then it's not going to work. And you mentioned a very interesting point. Some of the conversations I've had with entrepreneurs and uh, guests on this show and, and my clients in general, mm -hmm. there's a very sincere awareness and concern about social media, yeah. but there's also a complete lack of understanding of how they can make it work for their business or, or their brand. Yes. And you mentioned a very important point, relations. I mean, I'm in public relations. Mm -hmm. Relationship public relations is very important to me, especially. Yes. A lot of times people like to hide behind social media and hide behind um, email and other, other forms of communication right. without actually taking that next step and having a one-on-one -on -one relationship. Right. right. And that's something that I think is interesting with what you're doing with social media because you're actually engaging people and there's a follow-up to it. Yes. Definitely. Definitely. I love all the people that I have on my team because I feel like I could be friends with them. <laughs> okay. And those are the types of people, it's sort of your own choice of who do you get to work with. Right. And you establish that on social media, but obviously a lot of those relationships then turn into in-person relationships when you meet up with them, if they're local or if they are, um, you know, Maybe they're not local, but if they're at an, a joint event that we all sure. go to, and it's it's really it's 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 really neat. It is now when you talk about communicating with your audience. Yes, is your audience customers? Is your audience team members? Is your audience?
clients or where do you where do you look at what what do you look at as your audience do you have it segmented into different areas or oh, now you're going to ask me all my recruiting secrets no 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 i'm just i'm actually i'm, in, I'm interested in no, i'm interested in how you I when you would, engage with people are right. you engaging with them on a customer level or you're engaging with them on a personal level or you're engaging them on a Employee level? Oh, not employee. No, yeah. everybody's their own CEO in network marketing. Um, I just put out content related to things I'm passionate about: health, education, business. Sometimes I will attract if I make a post about health and um, how something is working. For example, in CBD and how someone experienced pain relief. I will then, you know, obviously that would target possibly a customer. However, if I'm talking about building a business around CBD and how, you know, you can now build a global franchise. Mm. And if you are a small business owner, now you can build something from your phone that requires very little inventory, no trucks, no warehouses, no payroll, no employees. Then when I start speaking that language, then I'm going to have people who are more business minded. Right. So I remember one of the videos that I did was, um, I, I said, you don't need a new job. What you need is a new quadrant. And it was talking about Robert Kiyosaki's cash flow quadrant. And it said people are employee minded, you know, small business owners, big business owners or investors. And you fall into, some people fall into more than one category, but it was all about how to switch the mindset from an employee mindset to a CEO mindset and what's the best vehicle to go to big business okay. from employee. And that is through network marketing because you have all of the same systems and the leverage of that. And when you were talking about my social media following, your network is your net worth. Right. So that's why I really see with young people, they have this social media down. If they just understood how to leverage it right. and make money from it, but that's where the entrepreneurial spirit comes into play. They have to have that, and they also have to have leadership and guidance. And also, also there's an authenticity to the things that you're posting yes. on social media. Yes. Uh, I wondered if we could show a couple things on, on our on our screen here. Um, we have some photos that you had sent along our way. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us a little bit about what we're seeing here? Well, um, on the right, um, I'm talking about the CBD product and the cream, and I was talking about the um, – advantages of it and how it's purely liposomal um meaning you get up to you can get up to 100 percent absorption and how it's the only u.s patented um cbd uh, product with liposome technology on the market and i was talking all about that and then on the left i was talking about our business school and i was talking about um that's one of my team members right there with me and um i was just talking about the things that we learn and how we build on seven pillars of strength in that business school. We're taught mental, physical, emotional, spiritual, financial, time strength, and wow. yeah, and social media strength. So every time we were taught in that private Facebook group by our mentor, Rick Gutman, we get taught by him live three nights a week. And he always teaches on a different pillar and it feeds people. It feeds people emotionally. It feeds people um, mentally, you gain knowledge um, and then it also feeds you financially, you know, right. what, and it doesn't just stop at network marketing. He teaches us, okay, so once you make money now, how are you going to reinvest it in other cash flowing assets? Right. What are you going to do with that money? What are you going to do with that money? And, um, so it's, it's a complete development program and that's what I love about it. It's just, it's, it's, it's so much more than what people think network marketing sure. and MLM is. It really is. You, you, you go through an MLM a mirror is put up to your face and every single insecurity or um, struggle that you may have about yourself is put right up in front of you and you have to face it if you <laughs> if you want to move forward and if you want to be your the best version of yourself and the best business person. So it's a challenge, but I'm competitive, so that's why I like it. <laughs> That's so wonderful, and you're also, as I mentioned, you're off. You're authentic. I, I see the enthusiasm, the passion you have mm -hmm. for what you're what you're talking about, and what you're what you're telling people about. Yes, the message you're communicating is from the heart. Mm -hmm. and it is. Yeah, that's a big part of what I try to do with my clients is that authentic, um, heartfelt story. Yeah, that uh, influences you to you know. 
I want to work with this person. I want to, yeah. I want to spend time with this person. I want to invest with this person. Yeah. I want to buy from this person. Yeah, I'm not going to tell you that it's easy. I'm not going to tell you that, you know, oh, we've got the best product. We've got the best this, this, that. I'm not going to lead with hyper emotionalism. I'm just going to tell you this is what it really is. I am here 100% to help you and mentor you and give you all the tools that you need. And I will work with you. I'll be down in the trenches with you. And, and I want to have you experience financial freedom because if the people I bring into the business aren't successful, then I'm not successful. Sure. And it really is a business of servitude. It is. If you, you know, in the corporate pyramid, when they say, you know, the CEO doesn't have to reach down to the employee and say, let me help you make more money. They don't That's have to do that. That's not the way it works. That's not the way it works. So when people say, oh, you know, MLM is a pyramid scheme and all this stuff. And, and I say, well, who's really in the pyramid? You know, because can you ever make more money as an employee? Can you ever make more than the CEO? No, you can't. It doesn't matter. So you are trapped, you know. Right, <laughs> but right. in network marketing, anybody can come in at any level and pass up the person who enrolled them in rank and in income it does not matter yeah. but the person who enrolls you has an incentive because we're it's invisible franchises so if i enroll you i want to make sure that you are doing the process and the duplication and you're setting up your system and you're very successful because then I get bonused more by the company. Sure. You get bonused more by the company. So, and at any point in time, you could make more than I could make if you're doing a better job sure. <laughs> with your business. And that's fair. That's fair. And that's what network marketing is. If you can't reach all the way down and help everybody pull up together, then you're going to be working the rest of your life rebuilding a business sure. constantly. Over and over again. Over and over again. Repeating, hope, theoretically, the same mistakes. Too. Yes, yes. And that's what I did not want to do. <laughs> I appreciate it. And I, and I, I uh, love your competitive spirit. I know that you were a student athlete oh, yeah. in high school and college, and we could talk about that at another time. Okay. But, uh, if oh, you can have me back on the show. I would like that. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're the first person that's asked in a while. Can I come back? So I love it. Okay. Now, if you wanted to be down, in touch, touch, contact you. Yes. I will suggest we're going to do that. I'm in every social media platform. I think I'm, I'm not sure which camera I'm looking at, but I'm at um I'm on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram at Barbara Fralinger. You can just find me, and um I'm also you know you can email me at bfralinger at gmail dot com. Great. And if people uh, did not get that information, feel free to contact me and I'll connect you with Barbara. Uh, I can be reached by email at jim at jhdenterprises.com. I'm also on Twitter at, at jhd16, Facebook, LinkedIn, and I have Instagram out there somewhere. I'm not as active as I should be on Instagram. I want to thank you again, Barbara, for being my guest today, and we will have you back. I will Yay. have you back. And I want to remind our viewers that I look forward to hearing your story. Uh, feel free to give me a call at 215-266-5943 uh, and let me know what your story is and hopefully we'll have you on the show. Remember that everyone has a story, but not everyone knows how to tell it.